Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Um, so I see a lot of uh, friends, some shareholders in the room, and um, two new faces and technical staff. So thank you very much for being there. And Chris and Alec and Raj, obviously it feels like I'm presenting to family here. Um, yeah, you, gave, you, you took my line there. Obviously, um, Osino is a new, relatively new company. It's a gold development and exploration company, active and focused on Namibia. Um, it was formed after the success of selling our prior project, which was called Ochikoto in Namibia, um, in 2011 to B2Gold. B2Gold did a fantastic job uh, building that mine and demonstrating to the world how profitable um, these kind of lower grade, large Namibian open pit gold deposits can be. So um, I stayed with B2 for a year or two thereafter and then I moved on and I started this company. Um, and we have advanced very fast. I think a couple of things that set us apart. One is that I believe we have one of the simplest, um, easiest, no issues and lowest risk uh, gold development projects out there. We discovered it ourselves um, three years ago. And within those three years, we've gone from zero to three million, just over three million ounces in open pit resources. Um, and uh, we have put out number of studies, a PEA, and we, uh, about two weeks ago, we put out a pre-feasibility study on the project. So we've come along very, very fast, um, and um, obviously doing things in a quality way. All right, so on Namibia, um, I have to belabor this point because in North America, I think people often just don't appreciate the, the, the beauty or the, the, the benefit of being in a place like Namibia. Um, so it is um, very stable has a very supportive uh, regulatory uh, uh, regime, very stable mining system, um, and it's a great place to permit and operate gold mines. And I think B2Gold have shown that with their Ochikota project. It also has excellent infrastructure, so that is reflected in a low capital intensity if you build projects there, um, and um, obviously a very well-established mining industry. I'm in Namibia, and I should have said, I'm a mining engineer. I was born in Namibia, so I've got deep roots there. I grew up there, and, um, and that's one of the reasons we've been able to progress this project um, with so much conviction. Um, we have a growing team. We used to be a quality explorer. We're rapidly uh, transforming into a development company. Uh, we are in the process of building a strong owner's team capability so that we can take this project from the pre-feasibility stage into definitive and into construction and uh, development. So in terms of share price, um, I said earlier, we're one of the simplest, easiest, um, you know, one of the best projects out there, and we're also one of the cheapest. So you can see that on our share price graph there, uh, in the last couple of weeks, the baby has been thrown out with the bathwater. We are a developer like all others, and, uh, you know, for those of you who are at Beaver Creek last week, you, you will know that there's a huge degree of skepticism towards developers at the moment. Um, uh, you know, the, the money side is worried about the ability of um, guys like ourselves to del deliver projects on time and especially within budget. Um, and that's why our share price has sold off the way it is and I think that's why it represents a huge opportunity. For Small Junior, we have an excellent share structure. We've got Ross Beatty, who I met a couple of years ago. He's our biggest shareholder. And we have the who's who of North American mining funds and a sprinkling of European funds in there. B2 Gold owns 8%. We bought a project from them not too long ago, which um, they graciously agreed to convert uh, cash payment into shares. So they ended up with 8%, and of course we had it in Namibia and having sold them that project. We've got about a 60 million US market cap at the moment, and um, 3.1 million ounces in resources and 2.2 million ounces in reserves. That's the number to pay attention to, because that puts us into the same environment as the marathons, ore zones, G mining ventures, those kind of companies who are capped at four or five times um, our market cap. So it's an orogenic belt. I'm not going to give you too much geology, but uh, generally that means these kind of deposits tend to be large. The geology tends to be very consistent. Um, they tend to occur in clusters, and they tend to be metallurgically easy. And that's beautiful, and that's reflected in our pre-feasibility study, and it's also reflected in, in the two other operating gold mines that exist in Namibia. And we are kind of sandwiched in, in between the two. Um, we have two projects. The focus is, of course, on the Twin Hills project, where... Uh, that's at the pre-feasibility stage. We've drilled it intensively over the last three years. But we, I, I mentioned that we, we acquired a project from B2 Gold. It's called Ondundu. Um, and that uh, B2 drilled 40,000 meters into it. 
They did not put out a resource, they just did, did the work internally, but we will publish the maiden resource on that project uh, in the next couple of weeks. I can tell you, obviously can't tell you the number, but I can tell you that it will make a dramatic difference to our overall um, resource position. And it does have a, the possibility to be co-developed with the Twin Hills project. Um, it's, it's not within trucking distance, but there's a gravity upgrading possibility. So that's a secondary project. We just focus on getting it to the PEA stage in the next six or nine months, resource first, then PEA. And that should demonstrate how we will bring that into the development of our main project, Twin Hills. So on Twin Hills, we discovered this project ourselves. I'm very proud of it. We did that under the noses of B2 Gold, Goldfields, Anglo, all these other entities that walked this ground for decades. The reason we found it is because it was undercover. For those of you who don't know, the major discoveries um, to, of today or tomorrow are going to be made in difficult places or through cover. So we adopted Australian exploration techniques that work very well in Namibia. We delineated a very large, about 20 kilometer gold system on surface, drilled it three years ago, and then we just put the foot on the, on the, on the pedal. We've drilled 220,000 meters since then. We've made four discoveries, kind of like a string of pearls. Um, and different to some of the Canadian drill, drill, drill stories, we are more about advancing the project forward, i.e. PEA, pre-feasibility, definitive, and actually putting it, you know, building it, putting it into construction. So a lot of detail there. I know these slides are small. You might not be able to see it. I'll just talk you through it. So that's the 220,000 meters of drilling that we've done. It is, I mentioned in the beginning, it's an orogenic uh, deposit. So it's, it is sedimentary hosted, structurally controlled. You can imagine it like a, like a bowl. Uh, one side of the bowl is mineralized. It's a package of between 50 and 150 meters thick. And it runs very consistently at between one and one and a half grams per ton. So very low geological risk um, and a very high conversion from resources to reserves. And you can see that on the numbers. Um, we have lately intercepted some high grade shoots, um, which we have not yet chased. And also because we focus so much on drilling out the resource, we haven't really uh, done enough exploration yet. So this, this project has serious legs and I think we'll continue to grow. And I, I think in five years time, when we look back at it, I have no doubt it's going to be a four, four and a half or more million ounce deposit. All right, so on the pre-feasibility, that's of course the key, that, that's the tangible part. We just put that out two weeks ago. It is a very recent study. It discounts all of the inflationary pressures and so forth. It was done by the preeminent um, African gold engineering group called Lycopodium, an Australian group. They did the study. Um, the results are excellent. Um, it shows that this project is economically feasible, has very uh, after tax, after everything, around about half a billion dollar US, those numbers are US, NPV, um, very good economics, and also a significant production rate. So peak production, 200,000 ounces a year for the first four years, and then tapering off. Long mine life, low cost, so it really ticks all of the boxes. Um, quick payback, yes, it does have a um, higher capital number, although um, for in measured in terms of capital intensity, it's quite acceptable. So that $375 million, I believe, can come down. I know every management team says that capital will come down, but we are seeing um, that some of the pricing, like freight and um, steel prices, uh, oil prices, etc., are coming off. So I do think that that capital number might come down somewhat as we go forward. Um, again, a lot of detail there. So it's got very good cash flows, especially in the early years. So the project has a very high debt carrying capacity. And that's why we are so confident that we can push this project through the uh, debt raising and financing process um, and why I'm confident that we'll, we'll be able to raise the, the capital required to develop this project. Um, it's a straightforward open pit, currently four pits. I think there might be well, three large ones, one small one. Um, nothing special over here. Uh, the only thing I guess it does have a dry stack tailings facility, which is quite an expensive piece of equipment, the big square that you can see over there. So that's an investment in, into doing the right thing and also because being in Namibia, of course, it's a semi-desert, it's water stressed and so saving water is very important and uh, dry stack tailings uh, allows you to, um, you know, it uses about half the amount of water uh, as, as it otherwise would. That's the processing layout, so that's another thing, you know, in, in evaluating junior companies, I don't want to lecture you, but, you know, it's all about geology, metallurgy, of course, management, finance, growth, and so forth. But so talking about uh, metallurgy, uh, we have done deep work. We've already completed definitive level metallurgical test work. We've done five rounds of test work. We've been very proactive in everything we've done. 
and that has confirmed that it's a straightforward processing layout. Um, you know, crush, grind, mill, um, and then a CIL with a gravity plant up front. So it's almost a carbon copy of the other two gold mines in Namibia. Very low technical risk, and um, uh, and of course we're pushing this forward now from a pre-fees into a definitive study, which should be coming out uh, very soon. So in terms of the phases, where from here? So the way I see the Lasson curve, or, or, or let's say generically speaking about the development of any mining project, it goes through different phases, uh, largely exploration phase, study phase, detailed engineering, and then construction. We are now at the end of the study phase. Um, and what I mean by that and why I say at the end is because in, in around six months' time, we will publish the definitive feasibility study on this project. Uh, that will be followed by a period of detailed design, which will allow us to order long lead items. And then subject to financing and subject to concluding permitting, this project could and should go into construction. It's got about a two-year build period. So I think in the best case scenario, if everything falls in place, it should produce gold in around the middle of 2025. Um, of course, permitting is, is a key one, and I, I didn't mention that in the beginning. One of the beauties of operating in Namibia, and I think this, I, I need to drum this point home, um, Permitting in Namibia is very different to North America. The process is the same. You have to do uh, environmental studies, public consultation, and, and, and. But the difference is that both the government and also the population, the society, is generally supportive of mining. Provided you do the right thing, uh, you know, in Namibia, um, we need jobs, we need economic development, and that's why mining projects have a lot of tailwinds. Like our project, for example, has a very high profile in country. It seemed to be transformative, socioeconomically speaking, and people want us to succeed. And that's why with permitting, for example, mining permit and environmental permit, I believe that in the next uh, month or two, um, that's quicker than even I as a local expected. And that, that, gives, you, that gives you a sense of, um, of what it's like to operate in Namibia. So in terms of these phases, I think by the time the definitive comes out, which should be early, early in the second quarter next year, um, we will be truly shovel ready. We will have all permits in place. Uh, we will have the studies at the appropriate level, and then we will be concluding project financing around that time. And I think at that point, probably around the middle of next year, um, we'll be able to make an investment decision. That's the layout, um, straightforward. You know, it's flat, it's dry, no jungles, no Arctic, no boiling water, no Kalashnikovs, no, Ebo no Ebola. It really is a vanilla location, and that's reflected in a relatively low capital intensity. Um, we work with the best we can find, like a podium is, is leading the uh, study team and, and, and a range of other um, specialist consultants with a lot of deep experience, in, especially in Africa and other places. Um, the resource I mentioned, I think one thing I should say, there might be a perception out there that this is a low grade project. It is a lowish grade project, around one gram per ton, 1.1 on the resource grade. But if you apply a higher cutoff grade, the three million answers convert, or the, it could be as expressed as two million answers at 1.5 grams per ton. So that's quite different. So that gives you a sense of the kind of talk um, that this project could have. It's still open at depth. It's open along strike. It has. It, it, it needs lots more drilling. All right, and then sort of coming to the end in terms of valuation, um, you can see there on the left the reserves, 2.2 million answers of reserves. That puts us into the same league as the Marathon G Mining Ventures or Zone more than tier two, actually better than most of those. Yes, the resources are relatively low compared to them, but who cares about resources when you have uh, reserves? Um, on a valuation basis, it's a similar story. So I think for a, for a developer, price per NAV is the appropriate valuation metric to use. We're at the bottom of the pack, and I think with ongoing de-risking, fast de-risking over the next six months, nine months, permitting, project financing, definitive study, typically you see a substantial re-rating. And I think that is why I said at the beginning, beginning of the pro, uh, presentation, I think we are one of the simplest, cheapest, most mispriced, lowest risk um, gold development opportunities out there. You could measure that if you don't like price per NAV, you can, um, you can measure it in terms of, um, you know, EV per reserve ounce, uh, same story, bottom of the pack. Um, okay, I'll skip over these slides. Capital and operating costs, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. So I've, I've been quoted elsewhere of saying that this, this is a very honest study. So we did this very thoroughly, very systematically, and the assumptions that went into it are very much defendable. Um, so despite discounting 
these inflationary costs that we are all aware of, the project still has very good um, cost numbers. For example, all in sustaining costs at about 930. So in the middle of the cost curve, I think there's, there's definitely potential to bring that down. And the same thing on the capital costs as well. I do think that's, that's our biggest challenge, I guess, for being a small cap developer, the question, how are we going to uh, finance this project? But uh, I think let's talk again in six months time, we would have made a lot of progress on that front. And then lastly, um, doing the right thing is of course important to us. I'm a Namibian, Namibian citizen. Um, so I have to be seen to do the right thing in country. B2 Gold did a superb job building that other gold mine in Namibia and putting responsible mining uh, on the map. And we, we plan to emulate that. So um, our first sustainability report will come out in a couple of weeks and um, there's a lot of depth and detail in there about what responsible mining actually means for us. And uh, I haven't spoken about exploration. I see I have four minutes left. So maybe I'll do that quickly. So we, when we started off, before we had this project, we uh, think it's, it's, it's over 8,000 square kilometers. Um, it's mostly undercover, so it, it, it is truly unexplored. And with using this orogenic approach, basically using world-class geophysics, which is cheaply available in Namibia, we map these very deep uh, regional structures, and we are now busy systematically exploring those. And I think there's a very good chance that we will continue to make uh, discoveries. We have some interest from, we have interest rather from a very senior uh, gold producer who wants to do regional exploration in Namibia with us. So um, a lot of upside there that we are getting zero credit for at this time. And then of course on the district level, we have literally um, consolidated an entire district. Um, 11 million answers have been found within 20 kilometers of our project so far. 8 million by historical by Anglo and predecessors, three by us. And I'm just mentioning these numbers to give you an idea of the, of the potential that exists in this area. And of course, we will continue to, to explore this um, aggressively. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hay. Just a quick question. Um, how similar is it to Ojikoto? Very similar. There are a few differences, but very similar. It's, of course, the same geology, so structurally controlled, sedimentary hosted, structurally controlled. So the, the, um, geological control, the geological controls are very similar. Where it's different is our grade is a little bit lower. They found a very large um, uh, high-grade chute, Beach Gold did. We have found a similar one, but smaller, and we need to chase it. And the recovery so far is a little bit lower. Our recovery is 94% more or less at the pre-feasibility stage. B2 Gold have an exceptional recovery of 99% because their mineralogy is such that gravity extracts about 70% of all ore. In our case, we only have about 30% gravity recovery. But otherwise, it's very, very similar. Can you say again your host countries uh, where your properties are located? It's in Namibia, which is in southwestern Africa, but um, I don't mean to be flippant or disrespectful to the rest of the continent, but uh, Namibia, people often say to me, oh, but you're in Africa. And I say, no, no, we're not in Africa, we are in Namibia. So it's, I say that sort of tongue in cheek because Namibia, if you haven't been there, you need to imagine it to be like Nevada. It looks and feels like Nevada. It's sparsely populated, very organized. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, excellent system of title, transparent, uh, fairly transparent government, uh, very supportive government. So it really is like operating in Nevada. It's a, it's a world-class jurisdiction without a doubt. Uh, were one of the European countries settle it originally? Or, or German, it used, to be, it used to be a German colony. Um, I think one of the, the main reason why it is different to the rest of the continent is because it only became independent in 1990. It was ruled by South Africa until 1990 and with the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, so we never had the communist experiment that, that the rest of the continent uh, went through, and that's why it is uh, still, shall I say, a very pristine country in a way. Thank you.